Hi friends, we're here uh, today to review the new air gun we bought here, the Remington Vantage 1200. We bought it because it was at Gunham Sporting Goods. They had a sale on it for $99. And I read online a couple of reviews, and I got some pretty good reviews, so I thought we'd take a look at it and uh, see what all you think. Alright, so here it is in the box. We haven't even opened it yet. Uh, looks like uh, the regular price on there was one sixty nine ninety nine. They had a special for one thirty nine ninety nine. Like I said, we bought it for ninety nine ninety nine. Well, let's go ahead and open it up here. They got those giant staples in the box, which are we'll just kind of try and tear around them a little bit. Don't want to wreck the box too bad in case we have to use it at all in the future. Minimal packing materials in here. And again, it probably doesn't need any. Here's the scope. Uh, it comes with a, a low-end scope. I believe it's a 4x32. We'll use it on there because we're not. We're just going to be shooting huh, ground squirrels in the yard, sparrows in the barn kind of thing. Maybe a rabbit or two here and there. But uh, before we'll have to go through the break-in period, we'll keep it off. Plus, with the iron sights it has, we'll want to get those sighted in first. Let's see in the small box here. Looks like the like the scope mounting hardware. So we'll put that on a side too. And here is the rifle itself, packaged in plastic. Here, we'll go ahead and get this unwrapped, and I'll be right back. We got it unwrapped here, and we'll take a quick look at it. First you'll notice here on the front end, and I've heard some complaints about this, they are plastic sights. Um, but they have the, the optics there for, for light, so you can see them pretty good at a distance, and in lower light conditions. Um, I'm not too particularly worried about it being plastic or anything here. Yeah, you could break it, but it'd probably be inexpensive to replace. Plus I will be using the scope and with the mounts I believe it comes with here, uh, we're not going to have access to the sights at all. The back one, again, is a plastic sight, but I do like the wheel adjustments on it. Again, more fiber optics. Um, it's even got markings here to tell you where you are left to right. So, overall, um, we are going to be shooting the, the, the iron sights here, or we'll have to say plastic sights, for a while, for the first uh, probably 100 rounds or so while we break it in, and then we'll mount the scope. But I, I have no reservations with the sight, especially for what we paid for it. Plastic trigger guard. Again, and it may not be the, the greatest thing in the world, but again, we paid $99 for it. I would say the hardwood stock is nice and smooth. You know, ba just a basic finish on it. Uh, it does have a rubber butt pad here. That's kind of nice. Um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll give it a hacking here. i got to kind of give it a little tap to get it loose here. It's uh, moderate for us there. It's not the smoothest thing in the world, but uh, we'll grease that up later. And and make it a little bit easier, a little bit less grindy and rough. Um, but that should be expected here. It doesn't look like they put much oil on it for packing. You know, they must seal them in those bags and then not have to worry about them rusting. But we're going to need to get some gun oil on this here to keep it from, from rusting now that it's exposed. But other than that, it, it's uh, you know, got a nice solid seal to it. Uh, it does have the, the safety down here in front of the trigger. It's on safe there, fire mode there. And let's go ahead and we'll just dry fire it here. Um, this does use a, a spring piston design here, so it's, it isn't the nitrogen. Uh, but here in Wisconsin, that could be an issue in the cold. Uh, you know, the spring and the fatigue from leaving it cocked for a while could be an issue. Uh, but again, it's a, another $50 more for something lower class with the, with the nitrogen option. So overall, I think it'll work pretty good. Let's go ahead and pull the trigger on here. I, I actually did it off camera first here to blow the packing while a lot of it stuff. The trigger does seem to have quite a bit of creep on it and it is a little it doesn't uh, it is a little bit more a little bit harder to pull than I would like. I knew they make some upgraded trigger options for this from from third party manufacturers. We probably will take a look at those and maybe install one at some point. Although this one is also adjustable so we'll, we'll look at adjusting it too. Let me go ahead and fire this. You see a lot of packing grease still coming out of it. 
it uh, oh, overall I'd say we this gun would rate pretty highly for the $99 price tag. You know, just from the sounds of it, it looks like it will have enough power. I have read that it's fairly accurate, uh, although some people are having trouble keeping it accurate because of the way the trigger is set up on it. We'll look at that later. We're running into a storm here soon, so what I'm going to do is quick go off camera here and start sighting this in, and then maybe we'll be able to pick up another time with the final, you know, I'll get it, get it on the paper and then with the final fine tuning we'll, we'll shoot another video. Thanks a lot. One last item here is I wanted to show what pellets we bought here. We bought the Gamo pointed hollow points, uh, basically hunting pellets. Uh, I don't think anyone's probably buying this gun really as a, you know, as a as a target gun. It's probably not the most accurate thing on the market you could buy for competition or something like that. So I, probably a lot of people use these. I like the points. The, they seem to be more accurate, you know, to have a pointed a pointed pellet, and but these also still have the hollow point behind it, so they, they ought to have good expansion and everything on small game. And they were the right price, 750 of them for 10 bucks. Uh, you can't go wrong there. So that's what I'll be sighting it in with and shooting. I always recommend using the ammo you, you plan to use the most for your application, you know, sighting the rifle in with that same ammunition. Is, you know, just like a regular firearm, uh, an air gun. Once it's sighted in, it'll, you know, you change ammo, and you will probably find that it's not sighted in as well anymore, that you'd have to retouch it up. So I'd say pick your pellet for your application, and uh, try and keep shooting that pellet all the time. put the gun away here and end this video, this first video on this gun. I just wanted to show you here before we put it away, I told you when we pulled it out, it didn't seem to have any oil on any of the metal parts here. It was sealed in a bag to keep it from rusting. Uh, it was fairly warm while we were, and you can see already a little bit of surface rust that's coming as I oil it. Um, but it was pretty hot today, like 89 degrees and humid, so when I was shooting it, I was, uh, I was sweating on it a little bit here. So you do want to take that off, you know, if you want to keep the gun looking nice and not all rusted up and fitted. You want to make sure before you put it away, you at least wipe it down and then oil it up like I'm doing here. Just using some standard gun oil and all the metal parts. So I'll say, in the end here, for the $99, I'd say this is an excellent buy. Uh, are there more accurate ones? Sure. Uh, ones with better triggers, definitely. Um, might be even some a little bit more powerful. This is 1,200 feet per second with uh, lead free ammo, PA ammo. Uh, which will bring us to another point here I didn't cover here in the video. Uh, is a lot of people, you know, especially in more urban areas, are popping chipmunks in the backyard or whatever. Uh, noise is a factor. This gun, I'd say, is medium as far as the noise it makes when it shoots. So there, uh, one thing I'd say when you get a gun that's 1,200 feet per second, remember the speed of sound is between 1,000 and 1,100 feet per second. So if you're using the PBA lead-free ammo um, in an area where you want to be quiet, it's not your best choice. You want to use lead, so it goes a little slower. Because if that PBA pellet breaks the sound barrier, it's going to make a tiny sonic boom, which is going to make it quite a bit louder than it would with, a, with lead ammo traveling just a little bit slower. But again, all in all, I'd say it's a good buy. Um, we'll take some more. Looks like we'll get the trigger adjustments looked at. I will show a little bit of detail on the site adjustments and stuff in future videos, but for now you have a great day.